Today we have Mark Hughes, former Michigan player on the A9 championship team, current assistant GM for the Clippers. Mark, I really appreciate you taking time to come on the podcast today. No problem, Stu. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking before, and obviously you have a unique position. You can't get into the specifics about talking about players, um, but have you been able to watch some of the Michigan team, and what are your thoughts on them? Oh, yeah, I have. I've watched quite a bit of them uh, nice. because Juwan's done such a wonderful job with that group. They're fun to watch. They play hard. Uh, they're well prepared. Yeah, it, it, it's good to see uh, the success that they're having this year. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. That is for sure as a fan, as a, as former players like ourselves. Uh, you said before, you know, we started recording, you have a unique story about Juwan and him coming to Michigan. What's that all about? Yeah. No. <laughs> so, yeah, at Juwan, when he was uh, a younger player coming to Michigan, he came to Michigan camp and I used to go speak there. Mm. And, uh, you know, the fish just said, hey, we really want Juwan, right? So one of the things I would do at the end of my talk, I would have, you know, the campers come out and do a post move, right? And if they scored, they would win, I think it was a t-shirt or a jersey or something. And, you know, I would block a bunch of shots, block a bunch of shots. And so finally I called Juwan out and I was like, Juwan, all right, here you go, man, see if you can score on me. And uh, so he, I said, hey, you know, give me a fake baseline, I'll go for it and then you go middle. So he fakes baseline. I go for the fake. He spends middle scores it, and he, you know, he won the jersey or whatever. So <laughs> this is like <laughs> whatever it takes, buddy, to get you get you to commit to Michigan. So, oh yeah, you gotta yeah. butter him up sometimes. That is for sure. I was yeah, I was talking cool. to uh, Terry Mills uh, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, and he was saying how much Fish was telling him that he wanted Jawan to come, and like he said he's on the phone with Jawan, like trying to get him to come and like he was going to be that first domino for you know the fab five to really commit so it's funny that fish was really pushing both of you to get him in there yeah yeah and obviously he i mean come on man you can see the job he did he's such a class individual and you know what what he does he's a leader right so he was the one that kind of helped the rest of those guys come and you look at chris and jalen jimmy and ray i mean what an unbelievable group that was. And, and uh, you know, they did such a nice job there. And so they're always fun to keep up with. So, yeah. yeah, definitely. That is for sure. And it is March. And I would be remiss if we did not talk about your, the A19 that you were part of that went to the championship. Uh, I want to get into some of the tournament um, games and, and details. But I'm very interested to hear your perspective and the perspective inside the locker room of the coaching change. Because it's still so wild to me that, you know, Frieder obviously took that job at Arizona State. Shen Blucker said, you know, I, I want a Michigan man. So they implemented Fisher in the job. You know, what is the thought inside the locker room when that has happened? Because you guys were a good team, obviously. You had success. And then that happens. Like, are you guys positive, like more juice? Like, are, are, you, are you down and confused? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you talk about it. Think about it. You get go the whole season, right, with one coach. And you're going for them. We were a good team. I mean, yeah. you know, we obviously – you know, didn't win the Big Ten title at Illinois and Indiana, I think, won it that year. But Illinois was a very, very good team, as they are this year. And so, you know, we were thinking, all right, here we go. Let's tighten it up. Let's, we didn't win a Big Ten title, but let's go win a national championship. And then, you know, we, we, we get the call to meet in Chrysler Arena. And so we go there like, man, what's going on? And uh, sure enough, Bo Schembechler's there. And, you know, he kind of, you know, gave us the news that, uh, you know, Coach Frieder's not going to coach us. And Coach Fish is going to be the one to take over. So obviously a shock yeah. to everybody. But, you know, Coach Fisher, who had recruited a lot of us, most of us really, and uh, he, he was a big man coach. We worked with the bigs. And so I was very, very close with Coach. So for me, it was like, oh, this is great, you know, getting a chance to, to help Coach and then see if we can, you know, continue our goal, which is to win a national championship. Yeah, and that, that was your thought. Like you guys still had that belief that national championship was the end, end goal. Yes, absolutely. And it was, you know, obviously it, it's a change and it's a, you know, uh, yeah. for us, it's like, whoa, this is, you know, something that we didn't count on, didn't think about. But, you know, once, you know, we went through that whole change, it was like, okay, we're pulling for Coach Fisher. Like that was one of the things we talked about. We said, hey man, let's, you know, let's help, let's do this for Fish, right? Sure. So, you know, and with, with Loy and JP and myself, Terry, like, Fish was, you know, the main guy for us, you know, as far as working out every day and, you know, having the bigs down there. So um, with that said, it's okay, let's do it for, for, for him. And, uh, you know, again, it was one of the goals that we had at the very beginning of the season, you know, and then Glenn Rice and I being captains, we're like, hey, this is, this is our last shot. And so, um, you know, we said, let's give it all we got. And uh, 
fortunately enough, had a, had a nice run there and, and was able to bring, bring it on home. Yeah, sure. I was breaking down some of the other tournaments and I believe it was 87 tournament. You guys played Navy and David Robinson. And I was looking at the stat line cause I was curious. He was 22 for 37 with 50 points. Like you just don't really see that in college. Like what was that experience playing against someone like that? Yeah. So that was my sophomore year starting playing against David Robinson. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, starting at center at six, eight, David, seven feet, the yeah. most freakishly athletic guy on the planet, probably at that time. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things we talked about was just, Hey, let's make him shoot the basketball. Right. So we want to keep him away from the basket, not give him the easy dunks because he obviously can run and can, you know, catch lobs and all that stuff, but we wanted to make his catches tough. So we're able to do that, get physical with him, boom. But this dude on this day, man, uh, knocking down every 15 footer, you know, turn sure. with that left hand, bang. I was like, are you kidding me? You know? <laughs> and then, you know, and then when he did get free, I mean, obviously he's, you know, so athletic, like I said, running, dunking, um, you know, people ask, hey, yeah, who's one of the toughest guys you ever had to guard? And, you know, he certainly comes to mind because, you know, obviously he had 50 on us. And I was, you know, one of the ones he dropped a bunch of them on my head, no doubt. But uh, but we ended up winning the game. So it's oh, like yeah. we was able to play against David Robinson in his last collegiate game, knocked him out of the tournament. But man, oh man, he had a terrific, terrific display on that evening. Yeah, that's a unique experience. I've never really played against anybody like that. And it's almost like, yeah, okay, let him go, let him eat a little bit, and you know, we'll take care of the rest. I mean, you guys won that game pretty handedly. Yeah, well, we had some pretty good offensive players. You know, Antoine yeah. Gare was really good. Guard Thompson, I think, had a tremendous shooting night. Uh, you know, Gary Grant, obviously, you know. So those guys, our guards really outplayed their guards and was able to make a lot of shots. So then Glenn Rice actually had a good game, too. So, you know, we had some guys that scored it. Um, David didn't have a whole lot of help. He had a couple guys that were decent, but, sure. you know, he carried that team, obviously, all year. But, my goodness, that 50-piece was, uh, yeah, that, that was pretty special. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> The next year, next year, 88, you guys were eliminated 87 by UNC and 88 again, you met UNC and got eliminated once again. Like how, how was that rematch and sort of feeling? Cause I feel like that 88 team was pretty good as well. Yeah, no, no, no. We were, we were a good team. And uh, you know, but again, you look at it, um, playing those guys, they had knocked us out when we were kind of underdogs, right? So we, you know, I think I only had 20 or 21 wins my sophomore year and then played them there. Boom. They're always loaded, obviously. Yeah. Carolinas like, come in and and they beat us. And then this year, the, the next year, it's like, all right, we're we're right there. Like we should, you know, be able to to hold our own and handle them with the squad that we had. And and they ended up knocking us out again. And you know, there's something about them, you know, like you know, Carolina was, you know, they have that that reputation, you know, of always getting these McDonald's All Americans, these blue blood, like, oh, yeah. and they come in expecting to win. And uh, so, you know, that's two years in a row that they knocked us out of the tournament. So, you know, for us, it was it was exciting and a great opportunity to be able to play them again in, in our, our senior year in 89 to be able to, to, to exact some revenge. Yeah, you like got the monkey off your back there with the 89 Elite Eight game, like finally getting UNC. Was that like a big relief? That, that was. And I tell you what, it, it was something, something that we really wanted too. it's like, hey, man, listen, we want we want to play the best. And yeah. the fact that we were playing with such confidence, you know, at that point and had some, you know, obviously early in the tournament had some, you know, had to kind of battle and get used to coach and uh, kind of play and had a couple of tough ones there. But then play Virginia really played well, shot the lights out. And so our confidence had really grown. And so getting able to play Carolina was great for us. Cause it's like, you know what? We, we owe these guys. And, you know, obviously we all, you know, you kind of go through the, the whole progression, you play one year, two year, because there weren't a lot of guys leaving early at that point, you know, so you're going to see some of the same guys. And, you know, for us to be able to have an opportunity to, to exact some revenge off them, it, it was terrific for us. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like you guys carried it over and it was like, I say like weight lifted off cause you just destroyed Virginia. Like it wasn't even close. Like it wasn't even a real game, almost like not even good competition. But you, you you kept that going against Illinois in the Final Four game, and you had nine and six in nineteen minutes. I mean, that's got to feel pretty good. That's pretty efficient. I think you're hoping for more minutes after that. But like that Final <laughs> Four game to have a performance like that in nineteen minutes, that's pretty damn good. No, I, you know we have such a such a deep team. 
you know, with Lloyd Vaughn and Terry Mills, myself and Glenn. I mean, yeah, was, crazy. my front court was just loaded. Yeah. And so, um, you know, for, for me, it's like I'm doing whatever it takes to, to help the team win. And again, you talk about revenge. Like Illinois had beaten us twice that year. Mm -hmm. um, most importantly, they beat us on senior day. Uh, and that was, you know, like one of those games where it's like, are you kidding me? Like in Christ Arena, like they yeah. came in and just, I mean, running up and down alley-oops, you know, just dunking on me, talking, I mean, the whole nine. So, you know, for us, it's like, well, okay, got our revenge against Carolina. Now it's time to get some revenge, you know, against Illinois. And, um, you know, Coach Fisher said one thing that I remember. He said, listen, guys, if we rebound the basketball, we'll win the game because they had crushed us on the offensive class mm. in, in Ann Arbor a few weeks back. So he said, hey, listen, we got to rebound. If we rebound, we'll win. And so sure enough, we, you know, ended up on the glass, beating them on the glass and, and getting a crucial rebound by, you know, offensive rebound, Sean Higgins put that shot in to kind yeah. of win the game for us. So, 